welcome to the LNG News Flash. Here's the latest news we have selected for you from all over the media. Oil's route may have been an unexpected boom for the biggest buyers of the liquefied natural gas, but its knock-on effects may come to bite them. That's because more than a dozen proposed LNG export projects from the US to Mozambique are at risk of being delayed or scrapped as crude careen to levels that make most of them unprofitable. Few of them come to fusion, that would ease a widening LNG supply glut later this decade and potentially lift prices amid breakneck demand growth in Asia. This piece of news we found on Financial Post and Bloomberg. Air Products has signed up to supply two LNG heat exchangers to the total-led Mozambique LNG venture. The company's facility in Port Manatee would manufacture the equipment, which would then be shipped to the Afungi Peninsula in Mozambique. More about this project you can read on energyvoice.com. While spot prices have gained slightly this week, they are still trading at their lowest for the time of year. They fell to a record low last month as the coronavirus outbreak dented industrial gas demand from China, the world's second largest LNG buyer. While more businesses have reopened in China in recent weeks, analysts do not expect activity to return to normal levels until April. Read the global report on financeyahoo.com. Chinese port achieves LNG fuel tug milestone. Ningbo Zhaoshan Port in China took a bold step when it ordered a large dual fuel tug for port and coastal towage services. This gamble paid off when the Chinese shipbuilder delivered Yongyang Shao Tao 60 with an LNG fuel system at the beginning of this year. It is the first Robert Allen designed dual fuel tug to operate in China. You can read more about this project on Riviera Maritime. Feed gas has been introduced into Freeport's LNG Train 3, marking the transition from construction to startup. That news came from McDermott International and its partners that are building the LNG liquefaction export facility in Texas, Chioda International and the Zachary Group. The three trains or units at Freeport LNG are expected to produce in excess of 15 million tons per year of LNG. This piece of news we found on Kalanish Energy. The Korean Register has granted approval in principle to verify the sustainability of a LNG dual-fuel propulsion car carrier developed by Hyundai Heavy Industries. The approval covers two pure car and truck carrier vessels with a respective capacity of 7,000 CEU and 8,100 CEU. Both vessels are equipped with International Maritime Organization Type C tanks, which are independent self-supporting LNG fuel tanks. You can read more about this on Hellenic Shipping News. On the same website, we found that Bulgaria plans to take 0.5 BCM per year of capacity in the planned floating LNG import facility at Alexandropolis in northern Greece. Greece already has one operating LNG import terminal at Rivathusa, which started operations in 2000 and expanded its capacity in 2018 but the government is supporting a second plant as a part of efforts to become a regional gas hub. Bulgaria's state-owned gas grid operator, Bulga Transgas, has a 20% stake in Alexandropolis LNG as a part of Sofia's strategy of diversifying its gas import sources and routes. The CPC Corporation, Taiwan's state-owned petrochemical company, announced the arrival of a shipment of carbon-neutral liquefied natural gas at Kaohsiung Yung'an LNG Terminal on March 4. The purchase of the carbon-neutral LNG is seen as another effort Taiwan is making towards its target of diminishing greenhouse gas emissions to 50% of their 205 levels by 2050. This news we also found on Hellenic Shipping News. As we read on Kalanish Energy, Warren Buffett and his Berkshire Hathaway Investment Company have reportedly decided against investing $4 billion U.S. in a proposed LNG project in Quebec. The company cited what it called political instability tied to rail blockades and demonstrations across Canada over a natural gas pipeline protest that originated in British Columbia. That has left investors nervous and wary. Those actions were aimed at Coastal Gas Lake Pipeline that is planned to move natural gas to Kitiman, British Columbia, where Royal Dutch Cell is building an LNG export facility. And last but not least, S&P Global Platts facilitated its first trade for the Japan-Korea marker derivatives in its pricing process, also known as market on close.
Commodities trader Trafigura bid for five lots of April Japan Korea marker at 3.45 per million British thermal units to which trader Vital eventually sold. More about this you can read on Hellenic Shipping News. That's it for this week. Tune in next week for more news. And until then, thanks for tuning in.